Let's take a look at finding the derivatives of two functions that involve both the chain rule and the product rule. So let's remind ourselves that the product rule, the derivative of a product f times g, is the derivative of the first function, we'll call that f, times the second function, g, we'll call that g, uh, plus the derivative of the second function, we'll call that g, times the first function, we call that f. Additionally, we want to remember the chain rule in that the derivative of a composition of functions, so f of g of x, is equal to the derivative of the outer function with the argument remaining unchanged times the derivative of the inner function or the argument. So those are the two major rules that we will be using here today. So let's go ahead and get started with the first function. We've got y equals the quantity x minus 2 squared times the cube root of the quantity 2x cubed minus 9. In preparation for finding the derivative, we will want to take that cube root function and write it in its exponent form. So x minus 2 squared times 2x cubed minus 9 to the 1 3rd power. At this point, we can go ahead and start applying the product rule and the chain rule. So dy dx, or our derivative of y, uh, using the product rule, we will take the derivative of the first function, we could think of this as f. And if I take the derivative of that, I'm going to need the chain rule because I have something squared. And so when you have a, a function squared, if this was x squared, we would use the power rule. So we're going to use the power rule. We will have 2 times leave the argument of the squared function alone raised to the first power. And since I'm leaving the argument of the squared function alone, I keep this as x minus 2. Then I multiply by the derivative of the argument. In this case, our argument for our squared function is x minus 2, and the derivative of x minus 2 is simply 1. So that's the derivative of f. And now we want to go ahead and multiply that by g. And notice that uh, g remains in its original form for the first term in the product function. So this would be times 2x cubed minus 9 to the 1 third power plus. And now we're ready to uh, apply this find the second term of the product rule. We'll be finding the derivative of g and then multiplying that by f. Now in g, our function g is something raised to the 1 3rd power. So we will be using the power rule again. And when I take my derivative of g, I'm going to have 1 3rd. I'm going to leave the argument of the cubic cube root function alone, and then I need my exponent to be 1 third minus 1. And 1 third minus 1 is negative 2 thirds. So this is going to be to the negative 2 thirds power. We leave the argument alone, so 2x cubed minus 9. But then the chain rule tells us that we multiply by the derivative of the argument. The derivative of the argument is 2 times 3x squared. The 2 is from the constant multiple rule, and the 3x squared is the derivative of the x cubed. The derivative of 9 is 0, so we'll just leave that derivative there. So that's the derivative of our second function. 
times our first function, which was x minus 2 squared. So we've completed finding the derivative, but let's go ahead and clean this derivative up a little bit. So the first thing I notice is that I do have a common factor of an x minus 2. So we will want to factor that out. Also, I notice that I do have something going on with this 2x cubed minus 9. In the first term, it's raised to the 1 3rd power. And in the second term, it's raised to the negative 2 thirds power. So we're going to use some algebra to help clean that up. But first, let's go ahead and factor out the x minus 2. So we have x minus 2 times, we'll have 2 times 1, so that's 2, times 2x cubed minus 9 to the 1 third power. Over here in our second term, I'm going to notice that I have a 1 third and a 3, and that those can divide out. And I also have a 2, but we'll hold on factoring that out. So I have a 2x squared, x squared, and then I have a 2x cubed minus 9 to the negative 2 thirds power. And then we factored out one uh, copy of the x minus 2, but notice there were two factors, so we still have one of those remaining. So we need an x minus 2 here as well. At this point, let's go ahead and factor out this 2 and that 2 from the two terms in um, our brackets. So we have dy dx equals 2 times x minus 2 times the quantity 2x cubed minus 9 to the 1 third power. Um, let's go ahead and take care of this negative exponent we have for a second term. So we're going to have x squared times x minus 2 all over 2x cubed minus 9 to the 2 thirds power. Now at this point, we will want to get a common denominator so we can combine those terms. So we will have dy dx equals 2 times the quantity x minus 2 we're going to go ahead and take this 2x cubed minus 9 to the 1 third power, and we're going to create a common denominator for it with our second term by multiplying by 2x cubed minus 9 to the 2 thirds power over 2x cubed minus 9 to the 2 thirds power. And that will create that common denominator that we need. Plus, then we'll have x, I'm going to go ahead and uh, multiply out this numerator. So we will have x cubed minus 2x squared all over 2x cubed minus 9 to the 2 thirds power. Oh, we're nearly done. Okay, so dy dx equals 2 times x minus 2. Now, when we multiply this 2x cubed minus 9 to the 1 third power times the 2x cubed minus 9 to the 2 thirds power, we add exponents. So 1 third plus 2 thirds is 1. So we actually end up with 2x plus 9 to the first power. So we, or we can just write that as 2x plus 9, 
I'm sorry, 2x cubed minus 9 to the first power. We'll just write it uh, that way over. Now we have a common denominator. So 2x cubed minus 9 to the 2 thirds power. So we in our numerator, we have 2x cubed minus 9 from getting the common denominator plus this other numerator we already had, the x cubed minus 2x squared. And at this point, um, we're basically done. There are uh, two terms we could combine. We could combine this 2x cubed with that the uh, x cubed. And so finally, we have our derivative is 2 times the quantity x minus 2 times 2x cubed plus x cubed is going to give us 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus 9 all over 2x cubed minus 9 to the 2 thirds power. So that is our derivative. Now, something I want you to notice is we were actually finished taking the derivative um, clear up here in this, um, in this first step. All of the subsequent work we did was to simplify that derivative. And we don't always have to simplify derivatives, but in particular, when we need to analyze the behavior of a derivative, it then becomes important to be able to simplify it. Okay, so let's take a look at our second example here. We have x to the fourth, so we will consider that the first function, or the f, if you will, in the product rule. And our second function is Four, square root of 4x plus 1, and so we will consider that our g function in the product rule. And so let's go ahead and rewrite this function so that it is ready for us to apply our rules of differentiation. And when we have a uh, function that involves a radical, we want to rewrite that part of the function in its exponent form. So we'll have x to the fourth times 4x plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. And so let's go ahead and um, apply the product rule. So we're looking for f prime of x. So the derivative of the first function, or the derivative of the f, is 4 times x cubed, using the power rule, times, and remember that we leave the second function alone, so the quantity 4x plus 1 raised to the 1 half, plus, and now with the product rule, we take the derivative of the second function, so we will be using both the power rule and the chain rule, so looking at this second function, we see that we have something raised to the one-half power. So the derivative of something to the one-half power is one-half times leave the argument of that function alone, and then one-half minus one is our new exponent, and that's going to be a negative one-half. Now we left the argument alone, so this is still a 4x plus 1. And then we multiply by the derivative of the argument, the derivative of 4x plus 1. The derivative of 4x is 4, and the derivative of 1 is 0, so 4 plus 0 is simply 4. And let's see, we needed to close a bracket there. All right, so then... Um, one thing we can do is I see I have a 1 half times a 4, and a 1 half times a 4 is equal to 2. 
And continuing on, f prime of x is equal to 4x cubed times 4x plus 1 to the 1 half power. And now we're going to take this uh, factor in our second term and rewrite it without the negative exponent. So this will be plus 2 times uh, I'm sorry, 2 over 4x plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. And now we will go ahead and get a common denominator. So f prime of x equals 4x cubed times 4x plus 1 to the 1 half power. Getting that common denominator, we'll multiply by 4x plus 1 to the 1 half power over 4x plus 1 to the 1 half power plus 2 over 4x plus 1 to the 1 half power. Continuing to simplify, we have 4x cubed. And then I have basically the square root of 4x plus 1 times the square root of 4x plus 1. So those are going to combine to give me simply 4x plus 1 over the quantity 4x plus 1 to the 1 half power. And then plus my second numerator is 2. And at this point, um, we can go ahead and distribute this 4x cubed. And we would basically be complete or done finding this derivative. So f prime of x equals 16x to the fourth power plus 4x cubed plus 2 all over 4x plus 1 raised to the one-half power. So this is the simplified form of our derivative, but keep in mind that we were basically finished finding our derivative in this very first line, and all of the remainder of this work was to simplify it to hopefully provide it in a, in a more simple form that would allow us to further analyze the derivative. I hope this helps.